How's it guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So over the last few months we've had a lot of requests to do a video on the care of African house snakes. So that is what we're going to be doing in today's video. And for those of you who have followed Ultimate Exotics on social media over the years, you will have noticed that we work with a lot of different species of house snakes and we've also uh, worked with a lot of different morphs of house snakes and we've actually developed a lot of first time morphs here at Ultimate Exotics. So the morphs and the breeding of house snakes is something that we're going to deal with later on in another video. Uh, but today's video, we're going to be dealing with specifically the care of African house snakes. So I'm sure many of you have heard of house snakes in the reptile hobby around the world. And there are many different types and different species of house snakes that you can get. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on, the, on house snakes from the most popular genus in captivity, and that is Boadon. Uh, the reason being is that the species that are in the genus Lamprophis, they have much more specific requir uh, care requirements within their individual species. And uh, whereas Boadon, they all have very similar care requirements. So we're going to be focusing on that. Now, there are quite a few species in the genus Boadon. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the Cap uh, Boadon capensis. Uh, that is your Cape house snake. Um, also your brown house snake, and that is found in S uh, South Africa. There then is Boadon filigonosus, your African house snake, which is found um, above South Africa, up into Central Africa and further up. And then also Boadon lineatus, which is uh, found mostly throughout um, Tanzania. So these are the more common species within the genus, and we're going to be focusing on their care in today's video. So the African house snake, like we mentioned, is found throughout sub-Saharan Africa. And is found through such a wide variety of different habitats, such as dense rainforests and desert environments, and a whole bunch of different habitats in between. So they're a very adaptable snake. And a lot of uh, African house snakes are actually also found throughout human settlements. Um, and that is where they get their common name from, house snake, because they're often found around human dwellings and, ha and houses. Uh, growing up in South Africa, we used to, and we still do find house snakes, um, in and around our houses on a regular basis and even around our facility here at Ultimate Exotics. So they are a fairly common um, snake to find and it is just so great every time we see one in the wild. So when it comes to the care of African house snakes, African house snakes are actually quite hardy snakes but this doesn't mean that it can be neglected because they're tough and hardy snakes. They do have a few specific requirements that need to be met in order for them to do well in captivity. The first one is their hotspot. Their hotspot needs to be at about 30, 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And their um, ambient or cooler side of the cage can be significantly cooler than that, about 20 degrees Celsius um, or about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they need a relative humidity of about 40 to 60%. And with those requirements, they can be kept in a large variety of different enclosures. Um, such as a display, you can keep them in quite an like, elaborate display enclosure like this one here next to me, or you can keep them in a desert den setup or in, a, or in plastic tubs in a racking system. The tubs are obviously the appropriate size, but they can be kept in a large variety of different enclosures, and uh, you can keep them in an enclosure that kind of suits you just as long as you make sure those specific requirements are met. So, here we have a naturalistic style setup for house snake. And this type of enclosure is perfect if you've got a single house snake and you're keeping it as a pet and you want to do something really nice and attractive uh, for the house snake. And as you can see, it's just very naturalistic. We have the reptile bark substrate and cocoa peat mix as a substrate. We have a naturalistic water bowl, naturalistic hide, a beautiful branch there. Uh, we've done heating from above in this enclosure, which works really well. The hotspot's about 30 degrees Celsius under the light. And then we have a plant which is placed in a pot, which so it's easy to water. We just have to spray it once a week. So this is an ideal setup. Um, it looks really great. And this house snake is loving it. This is a, we've got a, a butter, or a T minus orange butter house snake in here. And there he is there. Check how beautiful he is. He is awesome. When it comes to substrate for African house snake, the one thing you need to keep in mind is that African house snakes, they have a very good feeding response, they like to eat, they also have a very fast metabolism and that means that they defecate quite often, so they're quite messy snakes. So it's important that you have a substrate that is, a, a, that is absorptive and that also you can change quite easily and it's affordable to change on a regular basis because you need to clean your African house snakes enclosure on a regular basis. Uh, 
we use a, nat a natural untreated pine shaving. Uh, you can use aspen uh, snake bedding or reptile bark substrate. Some people I also know use newspaper, but newspaper you can imagine it will need to be uh, changed quite often because um, it can get messy quite quickly with your house snakes. But a wide variety of different substrates can be used. Just keep in mind that it needs to be changed often. Okay, so this is how we keep our adult house snakes in our racking systems. Um, it is breeding season, so we do have a male in here. Um, otherwise, we will keep the male separately, but he's in here just for two days and then we take him out. Um, but this is a very effective and simple way of, of keeping house snakes. This is our uh, natural untreated pine shavings. Uh, this is a, our water bowls that we use. They have this really cool hide that they really enjoy um, hiding under. At the back of this rack system, we have heating cable running at the back there that maintains that hot spot at 30, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. And we check the belly heat with... Um, infrared temperature gun to make sure it's correct and overall they're very happy like this we don't have any issues um the only other thing we do add in with the females is a laying box um, she's going to get one very soon because she's just started mating so she's going to be developing eggs soon but uh, very simple very effective the males we keep them exactly the same but in a slightly smaller tub i would say it's about half the size because the males are significantly smaller than the females you can see how much smaller he is there and it is that is common with house snakes. The males are basically se sexually dimorphic. They have longer tails and are often about half the size of the females at maturity. Like we mentioned, the relative humidity needs to be around 40 to 60 percent. We have seen with house snakes that are kept in enclosure too dry, they do have problem sheds. So if you see a problem shed, you know your humidity is too low and then you'll need to increase it. You can increase it by reducing ventilation or increasing the size of the water bowl and maybe even moving the water bowl a little bit over to the warm side of the enclosure so that it can cause a little bit more evaporation and increase the humidity. So just keep an eye on the snake and how it's shedding. Some people also use a moist hide which you can use some damp peat or damp sphagnum moss in a hide and that can help uh, create a moist hide for them when they need to shed they can get that extra humidity that they need. Okay, so we keep our hatchling house snakes um, in 2 liter ice cream tubs. Hatchling house snakes are very small when they first hatch. Uh, so these 2 liters work really well. This one has now uh, grown out for a few months and is now starting to um, outgrow this tub a little bit. And that's when we'll move them into about a 10 liter tub. But otherwise, these, are, these 2 liter clear ice cream tubs are perfect for hatchling house snakes. And uh, we just do a water bowl there uh, with the lid on and we just drill a nice big hole in the lid and that just stops the water from spilling when the tub is moved around. These are then placed into a heated uh, hatchling rack where they will have on the one, one side over here they'll have a, a heat cable running there which gives them their hot spots at 30 degrees and obviously they then have that gradient. So you must always remember that gradient is very important allowing the snake to choose where it wants to be. So this type of setup is perfect for the hatchlings and uh, we find it works really well for us. This is a Kenyan red house snake. How beautiful is this little guy? Check out that gold head and red body. Beautiful snake. African house snakes don't have any specific lighting requirements. They are a nocturnal species, which means that they are active during the night. So no special lighting is needed. If you are keeping them in a display enclosure like this one next to me, um, lighting is not an issue because it does look nice when you have it in your room, for example. But just make sure that it does go off for at least 12 hours uh, during the night. So set a timer on, make sure that the light goes off at night because that's when you, your house is going to come out and it's going to come out and uh, move around the cage and also look for food. When it comes to feeding African house snakes, it's one of the best things because they are excellent feeders. Now in the wild, they, they are very opportunistic and they eat a wide variety of different prey items. But in captivity, we feed them on a diet strictly of rodents, whether it's a multi a mouse or a rat, they love them all. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look and uh, what you'll see is when, we, when you feed an African house snake, you'll see how uh, they are such effective hunters. And they have one of the best strikes and one of the best um, constrictions that uh, any of our colibris have here at Ultimate Exotics. So let's go and have a look at feeding some of our house snakes quickly. Okay guys, so just an example of how we feed our house snakes. Uh, he has a frozen thawed wiener mouse. And like I said, generally their feeding response is pretty good. 
Um, she's just looking at me more than the mask now. Yeah, she's picked it up. There you go. They're such effective constrictors and they have generally have a very good feeding response and we feed ours once a week. And sometimes the females, if they need a little bit of extra weight, like this girl's just finished laying, um, she might get a second meal during the week just to put on a bit of um, body weight after her egg lay. Okay, here we have another T minus albino girl. And let's see if she's hungry. And look at that constriction. They have the most perfect curl or coil. They're such effective constrictors. Okay, yeah, here's one of our blue-eyed females. Let's see if she is hungry today. Wow, look at that. Eh? Beautiful coil. The last topic I'd like to touch on when it comes to the care of African house snakes is handling. Now one must remember hatchling house snakes, they can be quite jumpy and it's only a natural instinct that's built into them to try and escape a threat, which is, which is us basically. And uh, so you must be careful when you're opening in the enclosures of baby house snakes. They can often come flying out the substrate, out the enclosure and uh, if, they, if you're quite high up, they can obviously do some harm to themselves. So just be careful when it comes to that. But um, as they grow, house snakes tame down very well. And um, adults like this sub-adult female um, become very easy to handle and house snakes can make an excellent pet. They actually remind me more of a miniature python than a colibri. Um, they're just very unusual and unique in their looks and their, their movements and the way that they, they move and feel. So overall, they're just an excellent pet snake. And like I said, handling, the adults are calm, babies can be jumpy. So just be prepared for that if you're getting your first house snake as a baby. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you think you're getting a house snake, I hope this video has pushed you in the right direction and has taught you all the things you need to know to care for your house snake correctly. Overall, I think house snakes are an excellent colubrid. I think they are growing in popularity in the reptile hobby around the world and I'm looking forward to seeing more and more people keeping house snakes. They're an incredible species and with all the, the new colors and morphs and exciting uh, new species being bred, I'm hoping to see them become more uh, common in collections, but overall an excellent species. All right, thanks for watching this video, guys. Please hit the like button, leave a comment below, and most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.